Hello, fourth grade. How are my fabulous fourth graders? Today is Friday. I hope that you started on a little bit of your uh, packet work. Um, I hope that you found the paper inside that had uh, my phone number and Mrs. Pearson's phone number on it. So that way you can call us or email us if you have any questions. Um, we will be um, ready to assist you if you need any kind of help. So anyway, as you're going through your work and everything, um, let us know if you have any questions or need help. We're going to get back to our story because of Winn-Dixie. I found another great book nook out in my woods near my house. And if you look behind me, there's, there's a tree trunk and it looks like, I'm not for sure what could possibly be living under that trunk but anyway I will go ahead and get started and we are on chapter 17 <clears throat> I'm going to back up just a little bit when Dixie started to snore I, and I nudged him with my foot to try to make him quit I wanted to hear the rest of the story it was important to me to hear how how Litmus survived after losing everything he loved and if you remember Miss Franny Block there at the at the library and she is sharing a story about her great grandfather and how he became an orphan. So let's start chapter 17. Well, Litmus came home from the war, said Miss Franny, as she went on with her story, and found himself alone. And he sat down on what used to be the front step of his house. And he cried and he cried. He cried just like a baby. He missed his mama and he missed his daddy and he missed his sisters and he missed the boy that he used to be. When he finally finished crying, he had the strangest sensation. He felt like he wanted something sweet. He wanted a piece of candy. He hadn't had a piece of candy in years. And it was right then that he made a decision. Yes, ma'am. Litmus W. Block figured the world was a sorry affair and that, it, and, that it, and that it had had enough ugly things in it. And what he was going to do was concentrate on putting something sweet in it. He got up and started walking. He walked all the way to Florida. And the whole time he was walking, he was planning. Planning what? I asked. Why, planning the candy factory. Well, did he build it? I ask. Of course he did. It's still standing out on Fairville Road. That old building, said Amanda. That, that big spooky one? It is not spooky, said Miss Franny. It was the birthplace of the family fortune. It was there that my great-grandfather manufactured the litmus lozenge, a candy that was famous the world over. I've never heard of it, said Amanda. Me neither, I said. Well, said Miss Franny, they aren't made anymore. The world, it seems, lost its appetite for litmus lozenges, but I still happen to have a few. She opened the top drawer of her desk. It was full of candy. She opened the drawer below that. It was full of candy too. Miss Franny Block's whole desk was full of candy. Would you care for a litmus lozenge? She asked Amanda and me. Yes, please, said Amanda. Sure, I said. Can Win Dixie have one too? I have never known a dog that cared for hard candy, said Miss Franny, but he is welcome to try one. Miss Franny gave Amanda one litmus lozenge and me two. I unwrapped one and held it out to Winn-Dixie. He sat up and sniffed it and wagged his tail and took the candy from between my fingers real gentle. He tried to chew on it, and when that didn't work, he just swallowed the whole thing in one big gulp. Then he wagged his tail at me and lay back down. I ate my litmus lozenge slow. It tasted good. It tasted like root beer and strawberry 
and something else I didn't have a name for. Something that made me feel kind of sad. I looked over at Amanda. She was sucking on her candy and thinking hard. Do you like it? Miss Franny asked me. Yes, ma'am, I told her. What about you, Amanda? Do you like the litmus lozenge? Yes, ma'am, she said. But it, it makes me think of things that I feel sad about. I wondered what in the world Amanda Wilkinson had to feel sad about. She wasn't new in town. She had a mama and a daddy. I had seen, I had seen her with them in church. There's a secret ingredient in there, Miss Franny said. I, I know it, I told her. I, I, I can taste it. What is it? Sorrow, Miss Franny said. Not everybody can taste it. Children especially seem to have a hard time knowing it's there. I taste it, I said. Me too, said Amanda. Well then, Miss Franny said, you've probably both had your share of sadness. I had to move away from Watley and leave all my friends, I said. That is one sadness I have. And Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry are always picking on me. That's another sadness. And the biggest one, my biggest sadness, is that my mama left me when I was still small. And I can hardly remember her. I keep hoping I'll get to meet her and tell her some stories. It makes me miss Carson, said Amanda. She sounded like she was going to cry. Uh, I, I, I have to go. And she got up and almost ran out of the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. Who's Carson? I asked Miss Franny. She shook her head. Sorrow, she said. It is a sorrow-filled world. But how do you put that in a piece of candy? I asked her. How do you get that taste in there? That's the secret, she said. That's why Litmus made a fortune. He manufactured a piece of candy that tasted sweet and sad at the same time. Well, can I have a piece to take to my friend Gloria Dump? A and another one to take to Otis down at Gertrude's Pets? A and one for the preacher? A and, and one for Sweetie Pie, too? You may have as many as you want, said Miss Franny. So I stuffed my pockets full of litmus lozenges, and I thanked Miss Franny for her story, and I checked out Gone with the Wind which was a very big book. And I told Win Dixie to get up and the two of us left and went to Gloria Dumps. I rode right past the Dewberry's house. Dunlap and Stevie were playing football in the front yard and I was just getting ready to stick my tongue out at them. But then I thought about what Miss Franny said about war being terrible. And I thought about what Gloria Dumps said about not judging them too hard. And so, I just waved instead. And they stood and they stared at me. But when I was almost all the way past, I saw Dunlap put his hand up in the air and he waved back. Hey, he hollered, hey Opal. I waved harder and I thought about Amanda Wilkinson and how it was neat that she liked a good story the same as I did. And I wondered again, who was Carson? Chapter 18. When we got to Gloria Dumps, I told her I had two surprises for her and asked which one did she want first, the small one or the big one? The small one, said Gloria. I handed her the litmus lozenge and she moved it around in her hands, feeling it. Candy? She said, yes, ma'am, I told her. It's a litmus lozenge. Oh, Lord, yes. I remember these candies. My daddy used to eat them. She unwrapped the litmus lozenge and put it in her mouth and nodded her head. Do you like it? I asked her. Mm-hmm. She nodded her head slowly. It tastes sweet, but it also tastes like people leaving. You mean sad, I ask? Does it taste like sorrow to you? 
That's right, she said. It tastes sorrowful but sweet. Now, what's surprise number two? A book, I said. A book? Uh-huh, I said. I'm going to read it out loud to you. It's called Gone with the Wind. Miss Franny says it's a great book. It's about the Civil War. Do you know all about the Civil War? I have heard it mentioned a time or two, said Gloria, nodding her head and sucking on her litmus lozenge. Well, it's going to take us a long time to read this book, I told her. There are 1,037 pages. Woo-wee, said Gloria. She leaned back in her chair and crossed her hands on her stomach. We best get started then. All right, guys, I'm going to stop there. We will uh, continue reading uh, next week on Monday. Be looking for um, me reading the rest of this chapter. And also something I put is I put in Google Classroom, if you've been looking at that, um, I tried putting the link to the YouTube uh, in Google Classroom as well. I did that for Thursday. I'm going to try to do it for uh, today's reading as well. So if you have any trouble opening the link, let me know. I hope you all have a great weekend and I hope that I get to see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.